Okay, hi everyone, and welcome to today's tutorial. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to do motion tracking in After Effects. As you may have seen in the short film that I did with my friends over the half term for the Halloween short film, uh, we did the, it's basically a horror film, and there are a couple of shots in it that were motion tracked. There's this one, which is uh, tracking the text to the uh, gravestone here, and there's also one a bit further on, if I can find it, where my hand comes out the floor. This is also motion tracked. And there's another couple where the blood is like tracked to Cameron's neck. I think this is an example here where the blood's actually motion tracked on. So I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do several different types of motion tracking today. And I hope you guys find this very useful. So the first one is going to be the text track to the gravestone. So I'm going to make this a new composition. So I'm going to drag the in and out points into the bit where I want. So let's just go to like here. We don't need much of it, just a few seconds. Uh, and then we're going to right click on this active area and go trim comp to work area. And that basically means that this entire composition is just that area that you selected. Okay, so next, the first thing you want to do is motion track. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. The first one is actually in After Effects, which is quite useful. And it works for a lot of things, especially there's a high contrast point such as this. And uh, you can track it to like corners and stuff where the colors are different. So that's very easy for the computer to recognize like edges and stuff. And then it can track the motion. So if we click on the footage and we go to track motion, as you can see here, this little tracking points appeared. And basically what you can do is you can drag this along to like an area. I'm just going to use this because it's like very different to the rest of it and it will stand out so the computer will be able to tell um, where it is on the actual frame. Uh, so the first area, this little box here is like the search area and you want to basically get uh, the thing that you're trying to motion track in that. So as you can see when you move it, uh, it like magnifies the little box and you want to get the cross like exactly on what you're trying to track. So I'm going to get, just get this in the center. Uh, you make the box the size of the thing that you actually want to like motion track and then the second box is like a search area of like stuff that's relative to it. So you can just like move this out to kind of keep in mind the stuff around it. But uh, bear in mind that the bigger you make this, the longer the track takes. So I'm going to make it about that sort of size. We've got some of this stuff in the corner, but the main thing is just the uh, little, like, I don't know what this is. It looks like a piece of chewing gum, but I'm sure it's not because it's actually on someone's grave. Okay, so after you do that, you can go across and click this little button here. So you can click it manually and it goes through frame by frame. But uh, if we go back to the beginning, I'm actually just going to use this button, which tracks it all the way through. So as you can see, the little box kind of stuck along uh, to the thing on the grave as it was going. And now we have a tracking point for each frame where the um, thing moved and the box followed it. So now what you want to do is make something to apply the tracking data to. So we're going to right click down here, go to new and then null object. And I'm just going to call this tracker to make it a little bit easier. But you can call it whatever you want, really. Uh, and then you're going to go to edit target in the tracking like tab, select tracker. But uh, sometimes when you have like more pieces of footage, there'll be a lot of stuff here. So make sure you click the right thing, make sure you're on the null object and then click OK. And then uh, you also have to hit apply, which applies the uh, X and Y data. And you want to make sure it's X and Y, unless it's like, there are some specific situations where you only want to use just X or just Y. But in this case, we want to track the entire scene. So we're going to click apply X and Y, and then it'll add it in. And now you can see that it's applied and uh, this is turned red, which means that it's stuck to the null object. And this little like square here follows the thing on the gray perfectly for each shot. So now what we want to do is track some text to this, which is what I did in the uh, short film. So uh, we're going to go up to text, the text tool here. And uh, I actually used a like greystone font generator on the internet and then downloaded it. But for this, I'm just going to use any text. So let's type in my name, Alfie John Vaughan. Oh, I can't see what I'm typing because the text color is a bit weird. Uh, and then we're just going to bring this. Uh, let's make the size a little bit bigger. Oh, I typed my name wrong. That's great. And uh, we'll bring this down onto the greystone. So obviously, it will be a different color. You can position it how you want. But if you're making this realistic, obviously, you want to use this text. This is just for an example. So now the text is where we want it after you've positioned it. All you have to do is parent it to the null object, which sounds quite complicated, but it's actually not. This little tab here is the parent tab here. If you don't see this, you might have to click um, toggle switches and nodes. But it should always be on the right-hand side. So whichever one you're on, there's two options here. And uh, it should always be the furthest one on the right. So you can either click this little tab and choose the tracker here. Or what I like to do, just because it's a bit more fun, is use the pick whip tool, which is this like weird swirl thing here. And then you drag it to whatever thing you want to track it to. So I'm going to parent it to the tracker. And now, if we move this, you can see that the text is actually stuck to the gravestone, which is kind of what we wanted. But as you can see, as we move through, the camera kind of rotates and moves around, but the text actually stays on that horizontal plane because we only tracked it to a spot. We didn't track the rotation of the camera at all. So you can see that the text kind of moves around on the uh, X and Y axis, which is a little bit strange. And that's not really what you want for this sort of thing, which is why there are more ways of tracking, which I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to click on the footage again, and I'm going to go track motion again. Uh, so this goes, the text has disappeared now because we're in the source instead of the actual composition, which has the text in it as well. So this is just the footage layer. And what we're going to do this time is select two points of interest instead of just one. So under the tracking tab, we've got position ticked, which is the thing we used originally. And I'm also going to tick rotation and also scale. And that adds a second box, which basically means that you put these in two different places and then it tracks the footage in like relation to each other. So you have like an idea of the stuff that's moving because there's two points in the scene. So I'm going to select some corners this time just because they're quite easy to track. 
So I'm gonna use the first one, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and scale this up. I'm gonna move it to this corner here. And then the second one, I'm gonna bring over here and track it to this little corner. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and then scale this up as well. And, uh, oh, I'm in the middle of the scene. So this is the thing that happens quite a lot and it's quite useful to know. So if you're in the middle of the scene and you're not actually at the beginning, which is probably what you should try and do when you're tracking, but I've just lined these up and say I can't be bothered to go back to the beginning and actually uh, track them to the right place. If we go back to this frame, you can actually track backwards, which is what I've done there by clicking that. And then we can track forwards as well, which just does like the entire thing. And you can do it from anywhere in, this, in the uh, timeline, which is quite useful. So now that this scene is tracked, we can go to, uh, let's delete this tracker and do a new null object. It's going to go new uh, null object again, enter to change the name and just type tracker. I'm going to go to edit target. I'm going to select tracker. As you can see there, it just selected the text layer automatically, but you want to change it to the null object every time. Press OK and then press apply X and Y and it's done. So now as we can see, we have the keyframes again. And uh, the last thing you want to do is just track the text to this. Okay, so there we go. So now the text stays in orientation with the grave, or does it? As you can see here, it goes really, really weird because um, the because of like parallax and perspective, um, this side of the grave is slightly closer to the camera than this side. So actually, it's not completely like parallel with the camera. It's actually going off at a sort of angle. And this can cause a lot of problems when you're tracking, which is why using the uh, inbuilt tracker in After Effects isn't perfect for everything like this. If you just want to track something like, I don't know, a bloodstain to Nick's chest if he was shot, you could track like one of the letters here. And it would be really simple because it doesn't matter about rotation that much. But for this sort of thing where you can see that it's moving around quite a lot and it's gone diagonal, which is what we don't want, you can actually use a better piece of software that comes with After Effects so you don't have to worry about downloading it called Mocha. So if we select the footage and we go to um, animation and then track with Mocha AE, that's going to open up Mocha, which is down here. And then once this opens, you'll be prompted to save it. So I'm just going to call this, I don't know, gravestone. Uh, text track. Oh, I can't type because I'm trying to look at the screen and do other stuff as well. Uh, text track. Oh, for God's sake. There we go. Uh, you want to change the location, so I'm just going to put this in here, which is the folder I set up for the other tracks that I did because I had to do quite a few. And then you press OK. And uh, that opens it up into Mocha. This is the timeline you have here. It's a little bit different to After Effects, so you have to kind of get your head around it. But basically, these two red bits here are um, the same like positions as where you set your in and out points in After Effects. So the footage is exactly the same length, which is really, really handy. So I'm going to go to the first frame um, in Mocha and basically what you want to do is select like an area that you want to track. So there's this thing called the X-Spline tool up here, create X-Spline um, layer tool. So we're going to click this and I'm just going to draw like the relative shape of the grave. So it doesn't have to be exact, you don't want to go around the edge, you just want to like draw a bit like a pretty similar sort of um, shape to the thing that you're tracking. So for the example this would be fine and this basically tracks the like inside layer of this mask that you've just drawn. And by the way what I was doing there is I was using the left click to draw the points and then once I finished I right click to close the layer so it's like this now and it's an actual fixed shape and then basically what you want to do from here is just click the uh, track forward key which is just there and it will go through frame by frame and it will track the inside layer of this and basically the more contrast you have it's a lot easier for the computer to realize where this stuff is located in the frame so here we've got this little block we've got all the like weird bits of like moss and stuff going on the grave and this actually creates really really good tracking points which is easy for Mocha to track and it's tracking the inside layer of this so everything inside here is getting tracked in relation to everything else which is quite handy so now it's finished tracking, all we have to do is go to export tracking data. You want to make sure you have After Effects transform data, position scale and rotation at the bottom. The other ones you have like corner pin and corner pin only supports blah 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 blah. I don't know what the other two do. But um, this one is for just like straight up motion tracking. So then you want to go copy to clipboard, you can save it as well. And also when you quit it's going to prompt you to save it, so just click save. And then this takes us back to After Effects. So what you want to do from here is create a new null object and call it tracker again. You don't have to call it tracker, I just like doing it for simplicity's sakes because it makes it very clear what it is. You want to make sure you're at the first frame of the clip and just press command v or control v if you're on a pc i'm on a mac and that copy and paste all the um tracking data from mocha into after effects and you press u that opens up all the keyframes and you can see them here uh, but basically now everything we tracked in mocha is copy and pasted into the after effects composition which is really really cool so the tracking data is now on this and all we have to do is parent the text to it but actually i'm going to sort out the rotation of the text first so if we move this to be like in the correct rotation with the grave and now we parent it to the tracker and click off it. As you can see, the text sticks absolutely perfectly to the gray stone, and you can see it rotates as the camera rotates, and that is pretty much a perfect track. You could make it more precise, but for this tutorial, I think that's okay. So that's a really basic outline on how I did the effects from the uh, short film and basically just an introduction to motion tracking. I might do some more advanced tutorials on some other stuff because sometimes you have things that get in the way, things that disrupt the tracking data, and it can get quite complicated. But for the most part, if you're doing this and you're thinking about doing some motion tracking effects, shoot with nothing in front of it so that nothing interrupts the tracking data. And then it'll be a really simple effect to pull off and it works really, really well. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If you liked it, subscribe and I'll see you next time.